Hey, what's going on guys? So today I am super excited to be melting some silver and doing my first hand pour. So what we have here is a two auto branded electric, I guess furnace, that's what you would call it. Um, I have seen everyone and their brother use this thing. I <laughs> follow a lot of uh, precious metals channels and stuff and the people do hand pouring. Um, this is one of the more popular ones, so I wanted to check out one of the kits and that's what we're doing today. So, uh, basically, this just heats up really, really hot. All right, and on top, you open that. This here gets red hot. Obviously, you pour in your silver. Obviously, this will also do other metals as well. You come in here, you grab that, you lift out, and you pour it. You pour it into your molds, right? So, there's two. This kit comes with a, a smaller and larger um, crucible, I guess you'd call it. Um, I'm only using the small one there because I'm not melting a lot. And it, the kit also came with a graphite mold. All right, now this is small. I don't think, like originally I want to do one ounce uh, pours, but I don't think this is going to hold an ounce. Um, so I will melt maybe an ounce or two, and I'll probably use these three here. I'll try a little bar, or the biggest of the little bars here. And then this looks like maybe a quarter ounce, maybe a half ounce, something like that. But we'll see. I'm playing around with it. Again, it's first time ever doing this. I also bought a punch set. It's important to obviously mark your uh, your precious metals. You have to put the purity and the weight um, using 999 fine silver. All right, this was some silver shot I got from Stevens Best Loot. This is a five ounce tub. I separate it into one ounce uh, little baggies. And yeah, that is pretty much it. And I also have a couple of my custom punches too. So I have the uh, channel logo and I have one cool one of Gus which I'm not sure, I think it's gonna be a little big for these pieces, but we'll try that in the future. I got my scale here so I can weigh everything out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and not part of the kit, but I did buy a torch, all right? It's important that when you take your molted metal that's extremely, extremely hot, you don't pour it into a cold uh, mold because apparently, and again, just watching videos on this, if this is cold, it's gonna kind of splatter out, make a mess, obviously very dangerous, so. I'm going to hit this with a torch, get this nice and hot before I actually pour it. All right, and I'm realizing now that I need a container with some water to pop it in when I'm done to quickly cool it off. So I will figure that out and find something for that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is electric. I'm going to plug this guy in. I'm going to set everything up uh, outside. I don't want to be indoors with this. Um, I would imagine breathing the fumes wouldn't be very good for you. Uh, also, this kit did come with uh, big old gloves. Very important. Obviously, we're dealing with liquid metal. If you spill that on you, that would be bad news. Um, so, we're going to take a lot of precautions here. This is obviously a, a serious uh, little venture. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So, I'm going to plug this in, get an extension cord. We're going to go outside, heat this thing up. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, and we'll just go from there. All right. So, outside the uh, furnace is heating up. I have it set to 1160 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what it's preset to. Obviously, you can adjust the temperature up and down, but when you get these out of the package, that's what they're set to. And from watching videos, that seems like a perfectly fine temperature. That translates to 2120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is plenty to melt silver. Um, here is the crucible. I put two ounces of silver shot in there. All right, it's actually a little over two ounces. So we will see, I'm assuming again, it'll be this, these three, right? And then if there's a little extra, I'll have to throw it in one of these other ones and just save it for a future melt or something. But yeah, I mean, it's the first time, so I'm sure there'll be, you know, some, some practice necessary before I get this down, but very excited. So I'm gonna wait for this to heat up, get the gloves on. Actually, I'm gonna put this in there right now so it can sit in there while it's heating, obviously. And that's it, I'll uh, change the camera and we'll check it out when I'm all ready. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to show you my little setup here. I uh, went to Lowe's and got a like 16 by 16 uh, cement block. This is to try to keep things as level as possible. Obviously, whatever surface it's on, if that's not level, it's not helpful. But I figured I need a nice flat surface. Um, I have my little cooling tray, which is definitely too shallow and too small. <laughs> but I am just making small pieces, so hopefully that'll work. I did find a much larger plastic container, but I thought it's the plastic in amount, So I just went with that. Hopefully it works out. Um, but I want to show you how fast this uh, heats up here. All right, so we can see 746, 47, 48, and so forth. So like I said, we are roughly 15 minutes in, something like that. 
when this hits around I want to say like 950 or a thousand probably around a thousand I will start uh, heating up the the mold all right all right so we just hit a thousand degrees Celsius I'm gonna go ahead and open it and just take a quick little peek see what's going on inside all right so we get a little peek in there I can't really see my viewfinder right now but hopefully you can see what's going on so it looks like we're starting to melt here so I'll be back all right, so the silver is uh, melting. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start warming up our our mold here. Right now we're at 1,050 degrees Celsius. Better grip on this. There we go. Oh, it's very dried. So I didn't quite come up the temperature. That might turn out fine but that little bit cooled off too fast. So I jumped the gun, it's only at 1086. I should have waited until 1150, but we'll see how that one works out. Might pour some more silver in here. So, should I dump this? <laughs> there you go. It's actually not too bad looking. Let's see if this works. Pretty much it. How about that? Well, I'll leave it in the water for a little bit. And I'll go ahead and pour some more silver in our furnace. We'll try all of them. Oh, that's it. All right. Go back in there. All right, so we got some funky <laughs> shapes here. And some of these are a little, oh man, it's too small for me to grab. Right, take the glove bag off here. It is too small to grab me with the grab together. No, this is as small as it gets, so those might have to kind of air cool here. Darn. Oh, there we go. Okay, and then this little glob I completely missed. Which is just too small to grab, so I might have to let that guy cool off naturally. Oh no, you got it, okay. All right, we're good. All right, so here are our pieces. 
Sorry, the sun's in my face. The first one came out the best. I'm gonna keep this one, and I have to weigh it first, but there's that little tiny nub on there. Um, this piece, you know, none of them really fit the mold. It's way too much. The bar would've been kinda cool, but again, it's just way past the mold size. This one, I'm on the fence about. We'll see, I may keep this one too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the rest of these back in, all right? So these are gonna get melted again. I'm gonna try to re-pour this size. Actually, I'm gonna stop there. That will look really good. I'm gonna leave this in. And I'm just gonna do these. And these are actually one ounces. I, I totally, uh, you know, miscalculated by putting the uh, the not melted silver in there. So these, with a little bit of a dome, they are just a hair over one ounce. So that's perfect. That actually looks like a really good pour. So I'm happy with that. Pull that off. Pull for tongs. Now, if you don't know, silver is. Uh, it's the one metal that gets the hottest fastest and the coolest fastest. So this immediately cools. I can, in fact, I can show you. I don't know how hot the water is. The water's quite warm, but I mean, that was melted, right? A couple seconds ago, and I can hang on to it. So that was actually a really good pour. It's probably the best one so far. So I like that. I dig that. I'm gonna put that off to the side. Keep that other silver melted, and I'll be back for another one. Uh, too cooled off. I was too slow making up my mind there. All right. These little pieces I have to let just cool. Like I said, that's uh. This is the one that came with the kit, but it's obviously a little, I mean, it's supposed to grab the crucible and everything, but obviously I need, I just need a little pair of pliers or something so I can grab these little bits. I also have a little bead here. I don't wanna lose any silver. Yeah, got that little bit of a mushroom effect. The one that was perfect, by the way, I weighed, and it's 0.9 something, which sucks. So I don't know if I'll remelt that or I'll just mark it 0.9, but that little mushroom cap thing actually does get it to one or over. Oh, there wasn't much in there. Damn. Okay. Well, I should have just done the small one then. I am done running out of silver. Okay. Well, that wasn't very helpful. <laughs> Actually, what I might do... Well, you know what? Let me, let me put this right back in here and just do the small one. See if I have enough to just do the small one. All right, this should be the last pour. I uh, ended up putting the one that was shy of an ounce back in. Because I don't know why that bothered me. <laughs> so, uh, I have about an ounce and a half. So I'm going to try to do both of these. Oh, that's sloppy. And that was all of it. <laughs> all right. So... Yeah, I don't know. That's a bummer. I was really hoping this would be the last one. That's just a little too much. Uh, dang. All right, I got to pour it back in. Uh, not too bad. Still liquid. Or is that all of it? That was all of it. It all came out one glob. All right. Well, I think I think I'll just keep the piece. That's all. So let's go ahead and shut this off. 
Oh, do I have to hold it? Oh no. The there we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got some. Like I said, a mushroom shape. It's actually a little more of an oval. So amazing to me I could pick that up. It was literally just completely liquid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I am done for today, but I will absolutely be buying more shot in the future. And uh, what I'll do is I'll clean everything up here and we'll go ahead and get inside. I will show you a, uh, you know, tabletop of what I did with these as far as the markings and stuff. So I'll be back. All right, so now we have the finished products. All right, so what I did was I stamped these things up and I hand polished them just with some flits on a rag. All right, I did some hammering obviously on uh, a few of these. So we'll go over them. First, I'll start with my favorite, which is this one. All right, and then of course I'll weigh these for you so you can see. So I did the little bit of hammering around there. I did the cutlery lover stamp and hammering on the side, hammering on the back. The back looks really nice. And I marked it. <laughs> if, you, if you are astute, you would have noticed that it says 1QZT because uh, I was stamping it in a dimly lit garage and I thought the punch was a zero or an O rather, and it was not, it was a Q. So I think I might go in there and just kind of punch out the bottom of the O so it doesn't look like such a you know, cross. I mean, at quick glance, it looks like OZT, which stands for Troy Ounce, if you don't know. So when you have uh, precious metals, you have to have the purity, which is on the bottom here, 999, all right, common stamping, um, which is 99.9% .9 pure silver. And then, of course, the weights in Troy Ounces. So I have the markers on here, but not, not quite. But it doesn't really matter because this is a piece I will have forever. This was my first poured piece and, and again, my favorite. That little nub on top, I kind of like mushed down a little bit and hammered over. All right, so it wasn't because this top part was sticking out just a little bit. But I am very pleased with this, and this is just over an ounce. All right. Next one here, I uh, forgot to put my own stamping on. What I did was I did the gust stamping, which you can see on this one. All right, so here's the gust stamping. And if you kind of look at this, this harsh line that's over here, that's the edge of it. So what I did was I tried it on this one first and it did not come out very well. And so I ended up hammering the whole thing out. I have to go back. Maybe I'll, I'll hit this with the color lever stamp or maybe I'll save this and just, uh, you know, remelt it. Who knows? That's what the best part of uh, pouring silver is. You can just keep on doing this over and over and over again an infinite amount of times. All right. So here's the stamping on the back. 1.3 uh, ounces. And the nines got messed up. The second nine I hit very light and then it slipped and then I hit it again light. And then instead of just making a horrible mess, I just left it. So this may or may not get remelted in the future. You can see this went over the mold. So we have a like mushroom cap. All right. So I mean, looks kind of like a mushed bullet. <clears throat> not the, the worst thing in the world, but certainly not something I, I really, really like. The Gus one, uh, I love the Gus stamp, but the problem is that I stamped this on the round part, and I think if I had a much larger, wider area, it would have came out much better because obviously a little bit of a space is cut off here where it's rounded. All right, so I, I hit it with a sledgehammer on a vise, but you know I don't have a press, so I mean that's really what would be what would be beneficial if you had a press to press these in perfectly. So I hammered it and it was kind of a light strike. So I kind of lined it back up a little bit and put it in the vise and squeezed the heck out of it to try to get more detail. Uh, but yes, same thing. This one is 1.3 ounces, 999 fine. And this also went over the mold. So we have a little bit of a mushroom cap here. And I just hammered the back and left the front unhammered. All right, so you can see Gus a little bit better. Now I happen to know exactly what this is. And if you guys have seen you know, this portrait before, um, you might be able to guess what it is. However, if I just randomly handed this to someone who didn't know me or Gus or anything like that, it's not a very distinctive image. It has to be, you know, perfectly done in my opinion. You have to have the whole head and face to see that what it is. Um, otherwise, you know, it might be muddled. Um, so yeah, what I'd like to do in the future is get a, a larger mold 
to more, more like a coin shape, like instead of having a chunky, uh, shorter diameter circle, I like a much larger circle that's flatter and do one ounce uh, hand poured pieces with much more surface area where I can maybe put more markings or mess around in the future with different uh, punches and stuff. But that is that one. And then lastly here, this one was the rest of the silver, which turned out also to be 1.3 ounces. So even though this one has a lot more overspill than this, all right, it's just how it is. All right, these are both the same weight. All right. uh, my concern with, um, you know, uh, measuring these, and of course I'm gonna weigh them in a second here to show you, is you always round down with, uh, with precious metal stuff, you don't round up. So if you had like, you know, you know 0.99 of a troy ounce, you wouldn't write an ounce, because people are gonna measure these in the future, and it might even be less, who knows. But anyway, so you can see these, you know, do weigh the same, even though it looks like there's a lot more poured, but the edge on top here is much thicker. This is a little flatter, all right? So as you can see that, it's just shaped differently, basically. This is more shifted. But I kept this for now. Same thing, 1.3 OZT, all right? I put the 999 on the front here and my logo, all right? So not all of them have OZT, Troy Ounce. It's kind of known in the you know pouring community um, that it is a Troy Ounce, but just one of those things. So I just mess around a little bit different here. I do like having more markings for maybe someone who's new. So you say, okay, it's 1.3 troy ounces and it's 999, fine. But anyway, so I kind of like this one too. So I love this one. Like I said, I will always have this one. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do in the future. If I'm gonna you know, sell these, if there's any interest, um, or if I'm just gonna keep these for myself, for my collection, because it's a fun little thing. I kind of like the idea of just keeping them because it's my first time ever doing this. I plan to pour silver a lot more in the future. I don't think any time in the very, very near future, only because I don't have more silver shot. Of course, you can melt any silver you have, but you know, even the rounds that I have, I like to keep rounds. I don't want to sacrifice them just to pour silver. Um, I do prefer having silver shot. It's the cheapest way to purchase silver as well. Uh, but there are no extra funds for that in the uh, foreseeable future. <laughs> so, you know, working on uh, bills and, you know, stuff like that. So, but down the road, I, I'd absolutely love to, you know, get another five or 10 ounces of silver shot and do some, uh, some interesting new pours and of course get some new molds. So that is definitely, you know, part of the plan down the road. It was really fun doing it. it the first time was very intimidating. You're pouring liquid metal. You do not want to mess up, but as long as you follow some simple safety precautions, you're going to be a-okay. All right, so we are in tri ounces. So first one here, I have marked 1.3. Put that on the scale, and there it is, 1.33. All right. Next one here is also 1.3, and that is 1.37, so it is slightly heavier when doing these measurements. This one is also 1.3, and is actually 1.34. And my favorite one here is supposed to be one ounce, and it is just over at 1.03 ounces. All right, and all together, by the way, this is every little bit of the five ounce shot tube I got from Steven's Best Loot which is, of course, over five ounces, 5.085. All right, just in case you're curious there, Stephen is very accurate with his stuff, does not mess around, um, so you can definitely purchase with confidence. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I, uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, you know, it is a lot of work. It, it's not all that, that much, because I'm doing a smaller amount. Now, if you're doing five and 10 ounce pours and stuff, yes, it's gonna take a little bit longer to heat up. It's gonna take a little bit longer to, um, you know, actually, you know, melt that larger quantity of silver. I did very small bits of silver. Um, I learned a lot with this. I think that it's very, very difficult to just have a steady hand. When you have a glob of melted silver and you go to pour that out, there's that tipping point, you know, where I'm, I'm tipping it and it's literally not moving, not moving, and then, okay, now it wants to move, but it's moving as a full mass. It's extremely difficult to just stop at some point, you know, because it comes out so fast, it comes out in one glob, it's almost impossible to, to, you know, super accurately pour that. So obviously what you'd want to do is pre-measure your silver out and uh, put in the, um, you know, the, uh, the furnace exactly what you want. So when you're pouring it, it's going to weigh exactly what it's supposed to, you know. That would be a, a better, better way of doing it. Uh, my issue here really was the small mold. 
It was a one ounce mold, I believe. It's just that when I, I did like a practice run, I put it in there, not melted. I didn't factor in, you know, the point that obviously there's a lot of empty space. So when I put a full ounce, because I, I pre-measured ounce bags, I wanted to do one ounce uh, rounds just like this. Um, but when I did that, it just didn't dawn on me, okay, well, obviously when it's melted, it's going to be a, a lot smaller of a space. So, you know, in hindsight, like I said, that's that's where you, uh, you learn things. This is my very first time, and I do feel like uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, going into this on round two, whenever that happens to be, with some different molds, I think it will come out awesome. But I'm still very, very happy with my, my first couple uh, attempts here. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Pouring silver is super fun. Um, I would do it outside, like I said. Um, you know, if you don't get some kind of a kit, if you are interested in one of these furnaces and you just want to get the furnace, obviously it's a little cheaper. Um, but I think the kit makes total sense if you don't have other things. You know, like the uh, the grabbers, whatever those are called. <laughs> I'd like to get a, a nicer uh, pair of them in the future, but obviously that works totally fine. Uh, as well as those uh, those fire gloves. Those are super important in case for some reason you accidentally briefly touch something that's super, super hot. You don't immediately get scolded. All right, that can really save you. And you guys probably didn't see it on camera, but I also have, I mean, I wear glasses normally. I have safety glasses for when I shoot that are prescription, so I was wearing those as well as I was wearing a face mask, a plastic face mask. So just in case something happened, if it hit a cold area and popped up in the air and hit me in the face or something, you know, it would be a little bit of a, a layer of protection. But anyway, so that is it. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I had a ton of fun. I love the furnace. I see why everyone in the community gets into it. Uh, I shouldn't say everyone, but a, a fair amount of people got into, uh, you know, hand pouring and I can see why. It's very addictive, very, very fun. But just like everything else, like if you shoot firearms, you need to keep feeding it with ammo. <laughs> if you keep wanting to pour silver, you need to continuously buy silver, right? Or just melt your old stuff. Technically, I can just keep remelting and pouring these into different shapes forever. Uh, but I don't want to do that, obviously. I like to build a little collection of my own hand pours. And like I said, this is very basic stuff to start with. But uh, down the road, I probably get into some interesting, cool molds with some cool patterns and stuff. And maybe even something custom. Who knows? But anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day. Let me know down in the comment section, have you ever poured your own silver? Also keep in mind what's very cool, and you can look up the details, but now that I have a, an electric furnace, um, I can melt other metals as well. If I want to melt aluminum into a block, if I want to melt lead, um, I have to check. I know you could do copper in those. Um, the copper fumes are a little iffy. I've, obviously, I have to look into lead and all that stuff too. You don't want to breathe any of that stuff in. Uh, brass was one that I wanted to do. I have to see what the melting point of brass is because I have a ton of brass casings and I think it'd be kind of cool just to make brass ingots. I've been saving brass casings for years and years and years. I don't necessarily want to uh, reload. I know that's the first instinct. I, I, you know, I kind of like the idea of just having some brass ingots for other people, but who knows? Maybe I'll just leave them as casings in case something goes down and someone who reloads needs them. Who knows? But I do have like 22 shells, let's just say, and obviously you're not reloading those. So maybe I'll, I'll play around with just the 22s and make some ingots or something. But anyway, that's all. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take it easy.